Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show, The Total You, with me, your hostess, Evangelist Farise Wallace. We're coming under the direction of Abundant Faith Cathedral, where our pastor is Bishop Joel T. Wallace. I am here with our guest. She's returning with us today, <laughs> and she is none other than Joe Robin Davis, and she's working out of Michigan. So she is, what do you call yourself now? An attorney. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a special class. Well, I, I, I specialize in property insurance, first party property insurance claims, okay. which is basically if you have a accidental direct physical loss, which are terms of art, such as a fire, a flood, um, a windstorm. Okay. Uh, and your insurance company gives you a hard time. I'm the person you come to. And see, this is what we spoke about the first part about if the type of coverage we should have and how to go about if we have to have a claim and the people we're supposed to have on our side and the people that are a part of the insurance. And we're going to, can you just kind of revamp on that just a little bit for us? Sure. It's it, When there's a claim, it's it sometimes becomes an adversarial process. Most times, thankfully, it does not. But insurance companies, as you well know, are not your friends. And they will delay, and they will try to pay less than you are entitled to under the terms of your policy and under Michigan law. So at the beginning, um, if there's a significant claim or even a smaller claim and you're concerned about the way it's going, um, my first suggestion would be to hire a licensed public insurance adjuster. And the state of Michigan licenses people with knowledge to represent the insured. They are adjusters for the insured instead of adjusters for the insurance company. And they know your policies, they know what you're entitled to, and they can put forth your claim and negotiate with the insurance company on more of an equal footing. Okay. Because it's if it's you against a big insurance the, company, yeah, yeah. Um, it can be problematic. It can be very disconcerting and scary. Very, because sometimes these people are not kind. Oh, definitely. They really come out with very harsh demeanors and they actually almost come at you like you're the one who's in the wrong and you shouldn't have made this claim and don't you know what your policy says? And and it's like, wait a minute. And this is why we're here today. Remember, at the very first session, I talked about how we're supposed to glean knowledge from those who have the knowledge. And it behooves us to be wise in that. That's according to scripture. And so because she's got the knowledge, it would be, I'm going to say, foolish of me not to avail myself of her knowledge. And I'm going to say this again. You said you've been in the business for how many years now? Over 40 years. And when I started, I actually did work for company for firms that represented insurance companies. But uh, I sleep a whole lot better at night. Um, uh oh, do you say? Did you say you worked for the insurance company? No, never worked for an insurance okay. company. I worked for firms that represented insurance companies. Oh, okay. And I, at some point in time, said, I, I, "This is not for me." And I switched over to representing policyholders, and I feel better about it. And I think I can do a lot to assist. Uh, policyholders or insureds in making sure they get what they're entitled to as far as justice, indemnification, um, what they're entitled to under the policy, which they pay premiums for. You yeah. are not in the wrong when you make a claim and these adjusters say, why are you making a claim? Right. right. You paid for the privilege of making a claim and putting yourself under all this suffering, okay. which May or may not happen. I get involved when sometimes it's 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 more adversarial. Oh, and they do make it very difficult sometimes to make a claim. You may mention last program about they have some of them paying the claims out within thirty days. The law says you're supposed to make payment after you receive proof as to the amount of loss within thirty days. That doesn't ever happen. And there's really very little. Um, the only thing you can get if they don't pay a claim in a timely manner is 12% penalty interest. And that's something we didn't discuss previously. Okay. Um, Michigan is one of the states in the country that does not have bad faith. Um, you'll see huge insurance verdicts in other states because the insurance company ends up having to pay the claim 
and then basically paying for not treating its policyholder in good faith. Okay. Because there's an obligation on the part of the insurance company to conduct itself and its investigation in good faith. But here, we don't have penalties. They're not penalized in any way other than 12% interest under the Michigan Uniform Trade Practices Act. They get away with the whole bunch. Well, we're trying to stop them. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's supposed to be fair and equitable. And I look at these commercials on television about homeowners and, and motor vehicle and, and no-fault ads and that type of insurance. And I just want to say, you know, they're very cute commercials. Okay. But they're not your friends. Ooh. I, you made mention of the equitable, and I remember uh, us reading about, what was it, the Michigan, what the F, the D-I-F-S, the Michigan Department of Insurance and Financial Services, and they specifically quoted but fundamental services for opportunity, security, and success as a Michigan resident and for you getting your... What you're entitled to. Right. And do we go to them first? No. Oh, the state okay. of Michigan, unfortunately, they put out great bulletins okay. about what you're entitled to and a lot of really good information, but they don't have the the power or the the authority they, to really regulate, for instance, homeowners insurance claims. Okay. Um, they don't have they have some powers, but and you can always make a claim. There's a form to make a complaint to the. Um, insurance bureau but you need to go to the person who's going to fight for you and that would be a first a public adjuster and then um an attorney like me i mean if the insurance company denies your claim you have no choice but to file a lawsuit Ooh. and you only have with the homeowners claims you only have usually one year to do it okay one That's year from the day of, well it's one year from the usually the date of denial it's one year and there's all kinds of uh, policy language that talks about it's one year, but it's stopped from the time you give notice to the insurance company and they deny your claim. So if you give notice to your insurance company the day one mm -hmm. and they deny your claim in nine months, okay, you have one year from the date of the denial. Okay. Gives you a little bit more time. Right. But if you're in a situation where you need a lawyer, it's better to go earlier than want. later. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is <laughs> okay. So I'm supposed you told me before not to really go for the lawyers up front. Oh no, I mean I would love to represent people up okay. front. The problem is I want to make sure that my clients don't pay for something that they don't need to pay for. Pay for better insurance. Okay. When you oh, get the see. lawyer, I mean a lot of lawyers will say, Come see me and I'll charge you and I'll do all these things and Sometimes, I mean, you balance it out. The best thing to do is get the best insurance you can with the company, and the, and they're rated. I, I, I looked on the websites, uh, uh, Forbes and U.S. News, rate the insurance companies okay. with respect to how they treat older people, Ooh. how they treat um, younger people, divorced people, because they take all that stuff into consideration. Okay. And there was an article... Um, regarding State Farm that I actually have on my Facebook page that talks about, um, there was a study that State Farm is, and, and I would say most insurance companies uh, are harder on people of different ethnic backgrounds, should I say? Yes, yes. And along that line, not even with the that part of it, but you may mention that we need that public- Public adjuster. Adjuster. That public adjuster, can they make recommendations if they find that we need a lawyer? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, I get referrals from public adjusters who call me and say my client is having a problem and needs to file a lawsuit okay. or needs to take an examination under oath. That's something that is, you know, people walk into these examinations under oath and they're difficult mm -hmm. and they go into your personal background, criminal background, bankruptcy background, and people say, I don't need a lawyer. I'll just tell the truth. You need a lawyer. Okay. 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 And this is from experience. They really do delve into every facet of your life. 
right? Your finances, everything. They download your phones and they're entitled to do that. All my text messages, everything, huh? Yeah. But, but if you have a lawyer there, they limit it and they, I, I, what I do is I limit it to a certain dates and I limit it to, uh, I want to make sure I get a copy of whatever report mm -hmm. is issued okay. so that I can go to someone who can tell me, sometimes I can read them, sometimes I have no idea what they're talking about because they have, you know, different sites where they can tell where you're, you were phoning from. Okay. They really get into my business. Yes, they do. And I'm there to protect you and tell you what you need to tell them. And sometimes to say, you know, they're entitled to reasonable requests. The question becomes what's reasonable. What's reasonable. And this is because I paid them, they can get, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's a contract and unfortunately that's the way it works. Um, and the policy has certain requirements. They have certain requirements too, but it seems like the penalties for the insured are far greater than the penalties for the insurance company. For instance, if you don't file a sworn statement and proof of loss, which is a one-page document that's notarized that sets forth your claim, within 60 days after they ask you for this piece of paper, they can deny your claim on that basis alone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, it, 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 and a lot of us don't know those terminologies. We don't know the limits for different pieces of paper that are required. Well, that's why your lawyer or your public adjuster, okay. they know the okay. dates. And that's what's important because they know, uh, you know, a public insurance adjuster will say, I have to get the sworn statement and proof of loss in within such and such a date. They will put together the contents inventory for you to look at and okay. age okay. Um, and okay. And usually they're experts at the building estimates because I've seen building estimates. I don't know how to build a house. Sounds right. Okay. But okay. you but you are swearing under oath that this is the amount of your claim. And so it behooves the person, like you said, to get the best insurance first. Right. Before making the claim. Well, the best insurance you can afford. Okay. You know, um, I, I don't look at premiums and I generate for others because I'm not involved in that process. But for instance, under no fault, um, you have to, I, I always say Michigan no fault used to be the best oh. insurance in the entire country. It was the most expensive. However, if God forbid you're in a horrible accident, it will, they would cover your medical expenses, yeah. all of them. Okay. Now there's a limit. So and people say, well, I'm going to get cheaper premiums because I'm going to get, you can get lesser insurance and full coverage is always the best because you just don't know what's going to happen what's in the future. Happen. Yeah. And I think that's the same for homeowners and all property insurance. Okay. You want to make sure that you're covered in the event of a loss. Yes. And a lot of, yes. We're trying very hard to make sure that we're getting the best for us. Right. When we're doing the insurance. All right. There was a question I had about looking for the type of insurances that we needed. Um, well, there's business owners insurance. There's uh, for people who own businesses, and that's somewhat different than homeowners insurance. Okay. There's renters insurance. There's um, insurance for boats. I mean, I don't know, but. Uh, but you know what? And this is just me going off the track. It's something you said that we're not required to have. This. No, we're not required. We're required to have automobile insurance, right. but we are not required to have homeowners insurance unless you're a tenant and your landlord requires it as part of the um, part of the lease. Uh, so it's really up to the person involved. And, and and there's also liability insurance involved. You don't want to have a house where somebody slips and falls okay. and hurts themselves and you don't have coverage. So the homeowner's policy does cover that. And those are different claims um, where, you know, but you have to have coverage for that as well. And that is on your declaration sheet. Oh, uh -huh. I, I am going to give, I'm just bringing this on her. I brought to the show today, two different declaration pages of insurance. And she's kind of, kind of review these. Thanks. Have at it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is an insurance, this is a amended declaration sheet for a homeowner's policy. And 
Let me see what kind of insurance it is. I'm just bringing this on her now. Okay, so just give her some time. Give me a second here. <laughs> okay, so you have basic coverage and... So the basic coverage is just what? Well, I don't know at this point. I have to okay. read it. And I really would like, you know, and I always ask when people to come in to bring me their entire policies, not okay. just their declaration sheet. Sorry. But that's okay. Um, so there's a limit of liability on the dwelling. Okay. Other structures, personal property, which is generally a percentage of what your dwelling coverage is. Uh, loss of use, which is what I described as additional living expenses. If you okay. can't live in your home for a period of time because of a loss, the insurance company is supposed to okay. pay for you to live elsewhere. Personal liability, that's what I was talking about with with respect to somebody slipping and falling in your home and you being responsible. The insurance company will defend you and there's coverage here up to a lot of money for each occurrence. So okay. this is great insurance. And it's based in there. Additionally, there's additional insurance for identity fraud. Backup okay. of sewers and drains is really something okay. that's important because um, it happens all the time. There's usually, it starts at $5,000. Um, but on that, um, on that note, there are a lot of areas where they will not cover backup sewage and drainage. Is that, am I correct? Well, then you find a different company. Ah, really? But what if you're in an area like, um, I'm, I'm going to go out of town, in Florida, where they've got the water levels are so high. What do you do? Do you, you know, the just... Florida pilot, the homeowners policies in Florida are astronomical. Okay. A lot of companies are not writing in Florida okay. because of these situations. Okay. Um, there's coverage. It's expensive. It's expensive to live in Florida. So it, you, no matter what, if they can say, no, we're not covering it. It's like um, flood damages. They stopped covering in Michigan for certain parts. Well, they, they, what they did was they said you have to have flood insurance, which okay. these policies do not. If you're in a flood plain, for instance, okay. um, you need additional insurance, which is a flood insurance policy, which okay. covers that. That's in addition to. Yes, and separate from. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. And here, I mean, I, we were talking before about the different types of coverage here. You've got guaranteed replacement costs on some of it, which is, you know, terrific. Personal property replacement costs, which we discussed. And there's backup of sewers or drains coverage. Okay. Limited guaranteed replacement cost, which cool. is, okay. which is even better than replacement cost. It's not guaranteed. It's guaranteed up to 125% of the dwelling limit. Okay. So this is a great policy, covers a lot. And these are, this is, these are the things you need to look for. Okay. So this is just the decoration. She didn't go in, I didn't bring her the policy. Thank goodness, <laughs> please don't. But policies, uh, you know, homeowners policies, you know, Michigan law has a, for fire insurance and homeowners policies, Michigan, law, there's a statute that has certain requirements that need to be in the policy that okay. protects the insurance company and also protects the policyholder. Okay. So if I don't see any of the things that you mentioned in that, I need to go back to my insurance company and say, look, this is what I want to add. Right. And I have that right. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I got to know that I know. Right. You need to know to ask for it. That's the problem. And usually an agent's going to want to sell you as much insurance as possible. So they're okay. going to present these these um, Addition. additions okay. to you. Okay. But yeah, don't they cost a lot more too? They do. Um, you have to balance the value of the insurance versus the cost and whether you can afford it. And thankfully in Michigan, the homeowner's insurance is, it's not, it's, it's it's reasonable compared to the homeowners insurance in Florida, for instance. Okay, okay. They have all those horror hurricanes and all that water. We don't okay. have that. Okay. So Michigan is at advantage over Florida. In that respect, yes. Okay, that's good. I gave you another one also. <laughs> I'm, I'm Thank really... you. <laughs> this one is a different policy. And yeah. We're, we're, we're really okay. This is okay. What this did, what in this particular case, they were ta they, they talked about a claim. Okay. See, somebody here had a claim and they issued a letter as to 
how much they would pay or would not pay. Okay. In this case, they said... That's another thing I want to know. Why is it that insurance companies, once you've made a claim, always want to increase your premiums? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they, they don't pay the claim and then they increase your premium. Yes. yes. Uh, in this particular instance, the claim was denied. And in this situation, if the claim is denied, uh, your only option is to pursue litigation. Okay. And in that case, you have to look. Th th what they do is they put in the letter why they think there's no coverage. Okay. And so you have to look at the policy. And at that point, you get, you get a lawyer involved to okay. see whether or not there's coverage in their opinion. I'm going to tell her this because I'm, this is something that I've dealt with. I didn't read this. I didn't know they had denied this. Oh. See, this is what I'm saying. And, well, if you didn't know they denied it and you didn't then, file suit okay. within yeah. a period of time, then you're kind of out of pocket. And see, this is where we really, really, really need to know that we know about this insurance and what our rights are and what our benefits are and what we can do. And you can always, call, I mean, I get phone calls all the time from people asking about different situations, and I like them to come in and bring their policy. Okay. Sometimes I can answer over the phone, but in order to give a thorough answer, um, you know, and, and I don't charge for that unless it involves more than reading a policy, okay. doing so, a little bit of research. Um, but uh, that's that's always, a, a, an attorney should always be available to people who right. are interested in, in, in pursuing their rights. Okay. Against from an insurance company. See, I'm learning that I need to learn more. <laughs> well, you know, when I go to certain places and I, they say, what do you want? And I say, well, you're the expert. Um, with insurance agents and situations like that, you have to either become an expert or talk to an expert. Okay. Especially when there's a claim. Okay. So we're talking to the expert. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we thank her because you have get enlightened us about the types of insurance that we need, what we need to look for, how we need to follow up, follow through. Because like I said, I didn't read these and I'm like, oh yeah, that's from the insurance company. Okay, they said this is this, so I put it, I filed it. Right, or put it in a drawer. I did, I filed it. And I'm like, I just, okay, really? This is what they said? I didn't realize that it was so, it's learning how to read what the insurance company is saying and then make sure that we get an understanding of what that insurance company is saying to us. Right. And sometimes the insurance company, I mean, they, they are required to, if there's a dispute as to a certain portion, for instance, but not, it's to, not, not only the coverages, but the amount. There's this provision in the policy that's mandated by Michigan law that allows either side to demand appraisal. So if there's a disagreement as to only the amount of payment, for instance, okay. Okay. not the coverages, there are quicker methods to resolve these disputes than litigation. But you got to know about them. Okay. I have a question. Um, a lot of companies are coming in from out of state. Can you address that? I mean, you know, well, I, I see that with the um, no-fault advertisements, okay. these companies coming in from out of state saying, well, we understand no-fault and we can give you a cheaper rate. Yes, they can, but they don't give you full coverage. Okay. Um, there are, you know, sometimes an out-of-state carrier is better. A lot of them are afraid of, no, of um, bad faith, which we don't have, but okay. They may treat you better. It, it's not a, a problem if you get somebody from out of state or in state in terms of companies. Okay. They still have to be um, okayed by, most of these companies have to be okayed by the state of Michigan. Some are not, and they put a big red stamp on the policy that says we're not admitted in the state of Michigan. But See? that's those are business policies generally. Okay, okay. And this is, I'm going to say this because we've been talking mostly about residential or personal type of insurance. Right. Joe also takes care of commercial policies for those churches, per se, interested. Yes. Churches or businesses that come under, they have to have a certain amount of coverage. 
So I do a lot of, I represent a lot of commercial um, property owners whose claims have been denied or they think they've been paid less than they're entitled to. Uh, those policies are far more complicated than the homeowner's policies. Okay. So um, it's incumbent and better for the policyholder to find an attorney who specializes in property damage claims as soon as possible because those are big claims. And sometimes when the insurance company is conducting an investigation, I will hire an expert to conduct an investigation, okay. Okay. for instance, as to the cause of the fire because it's amazing how many insurance company um, origin and cause investigators find a fire cause to be arson or incendiary when it's, it's not. really not. Yes. So we need an expert to go in and do the investigation as well. So that's a point in time where you really need somebody early on. I have a question too about these policies for um, businesses. Is it fair then for insurance companies to say, well, we're going to blackball you. No. And a lot of them do, don't they? Um, I think what happens is that you've got to find, you've got to find a different insurance company if okay. that's the case. Okay. Um, and there's always, and, and I'm getting away from, I just wanted to add one thing. If you have trouble getting homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance, um, there's after the Detroit Right. They don't call them riots anymore. But that's okay. the improper term, right. not being politically I'm correct. Riot. <laughs> but the, after the riots, um, the uh, state of Michigan enacted uh, the Michigan Basic Property Insurance okay. Association, which provides um, you can get insurance even if other companies won't provide it for you. And it's very limited, very limited. Very limited, yes. But at least it's some insurance. Okay. Oh. But I don't like the fact that they can essentially other one okay if one insurance says oh you made a claim you can't get insurance with us anymore and we're not gonna and when somebody else when the person goes out to buy another insurance policy they see that you were denied a claim on that insurance and well they're under the law um if you've been um denied a claim for a criminal act such as arson uh, within a period of years, the insurance company can say, we're not going to insure you. Um, there's a number of things. And people don't like to make claims because they say, if we have three claims, we might be canceled. Yes. My my position is that's what you pay for. You pay for your insurance coverage, but your rates will go up. So it's a balancing act. Ooh, I am so glad that you have told us all of this. And this is just the way I might have to invite you back again. <laughs> be my pleasure. This is such a learning experience, learning about the, not just the different types of insurance, but how to go about choosing the insurance, what we need to be looking for on that declaration page, how much coverage we're supposed to be having. And I'm just, oh, thank you again. Our guest was. Oh, I get to say it, Joe Robin Davis. And I, my office is in Farmington Hills. Okay, and we're going to be having her information on the end of this program. And I want to thank you for tuning in to The Total You. I'm your hostess, Evangelist Farise Wallace, and I want you to continue tuning in every night, 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. <laughs> I'll get this straight. Every day, please tune in. We've got so many more programs scheduled, and I want you to glean how God wants us to be that total you. We've got so much more to learn than just being a child of God. So please, thank you for tuning in. And I love you all. Till next time. Thank you.